call roll for us, please. Council Member Chambers? Here. Council Member Salzito? Here. Council Member Canfield is absent and Mayor DeVore. I'm here. Your motion is granted. I'll make that motion. I'll support. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Here, did you want to call roll? Sure. Uh, uh, Paul Marendorf is uh, absent. Uh, Susan Popper? Here. Um, Teresa Munt? Here. And Perry Beecham is here. And Craig Canfield is the representative from the City Council, so he's absent also. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, excuse those two at this present time. I'll make that motion. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, motion for approval of the agenda. I'll make that motion to put the agenda as presented. We'll support. Any changes? Do you guys need any changes? Um, I, is there, I guess we're going to get down to park comments, opportunity to talk about a couple of the other parks if we have time. We should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Citizen comment items on the agenda. I just live across the street, so I'm kind of interested in what's going on. Uh, RFP for the Riverwalk Park property, Michael. For approximately the past year, I've been working with developers interested in redeveloping the city school property. As part of their proposed project, they initially requested a 263-foot, 263.3 foot by 7 foot piece of property along the eastern region of the Riverside Park property to facilitate the development. Downtown property redevelopment is a challenging task because of the many issues that are encountered which many of your normal regular greenfield development do not have. This is, this is no different than really any other downtown project. I've probably done seven of these projects and every one of them always has certain issues, nuances to them that come up that you have to address that and if you had a regular piece of land, clear it, develop it, you normally don't have those issues. So this one is really no different in that aspect. Um, so, but there are some, um, there are some, there are some things that make this um, request a little bit different. Um, our city charter requires a vote of the people to sell, transfer, or dispose of any property in a master plan of the city. Currently, Riverside Park is in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. The requested portion of the property is technically in the plan, however, this is undeveloped property. If a sale were to occur, this portion must be removed from the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. If the portion of the property were to be sold, transferred, or disposed of, there is another issue to address. In 2012, the City of Lowell received a Michigan Department of Natural Resources Trust Fund grant to redevelop the path and the boat launch at Riverside Park. A condition of receiving this grant requires the park remain in perpetuity or the grant money received must be returned. However, over time, the DNR recognizes situations such as private development encroaching park property. The DNR allows a tran land transfer component whereby the municipality receives new land to use as park property in exchange for the land where the trust fund grant was provided for. In addition, the value and size of the land must be equal to or greater than the land being removed from the affected park. In October, I presented this project to the City Council and there was interest. I was directed by them to write an RFP and at some point set a meeting with the Parks and Recreation Commission to discuss this and I followed those directives. Uh, the RFP was purposely written prior to a joint meeting so we can review all possibilities coming in and have officially requested information to consider and move forward on this process. This RFP was difficult to develop as the steps provided in the Charter must be followed. This parcel of property on its own being is, is a non-conforming parcel. It can never be sold on its own per the Michigan Land Division Act. The parcel must be adjacent to a contiguous property and added to it. The RFP was worded in a way to address the City Charter and the Land Division Act concerns. On November 2018, the City received one bid from the RFP. The bid was from the Unity School Investor at LLC which includes Dr. Gary Zanster and Todd Shaw, who's here this evening. These two individuals approached the city in October regarding this, pro on this project. These were the two that were at the last meeting. They are proposing to transfer a 
by 67 parcel of, of property that they own, or 3,216 square feet of property, to be transferred to the city as park property in return for the 263.2 by 7 foot of property at Riverside Park. In October, there was also some discussion about vacating, possibly vacating High Street for the development. Um, that hasn't been formally requested at this time, as if I, at this time, and wasn't part of the RFP process. Um, at this, but it may be considered at a later date. Um, if the city is interested in moving it forward on this pro development in the manner requested, steps of removing it from the Parks and Recreation Master Plan and addressing the DNR Trust Fund grant issues must occur. Um, I'm presenting this project to you to consider and, and determine any feedback. If there's any changes you'd like to consider, now would be the appropriate time to do that. So, um, in your packet, also I did give you uh, some of the color version of it. Um, explaining the, um, actually there is, if you go down to the ninth page of the packet, if there's a, the area in yellow is the area that, that would be vacated, requested to be vacated. The area in blue would be provided to the city. So that's the land swap, basically. Basically. So, ninth page. Last page. <coughs> Right now, it's I believe they're the 
this, this small corner park property on parcel two, there is an easement, I, I do believe the city maintains that. The, the middle area is, is it was supposed to be a street, never became a street, so that's technically owned by the city. Okay, so that's street right there. <laughs> that street right there is, this street is public in the city. Correct. And just the space that says High Street, that rectangle. Correct. Correct. And didn't you say that parking for the condos would be on the square that they own? They'll be within that space. They're not going to be planning or expecting their people to be parking much on the street. They will be accounting for, fully accounting for parking for the people who are residents of that space. Talk to answer that question probably better. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. So um, for the residents that will be only living in those condominiums or whatever up there, um, will you be providing adequate parking for them, like building around for some sort of space for them? The garage is uh, east of uh, where the bus garage building is now. I'm sorry, what was that? There will be garages and parking east of where the bus garage building is now. And where the is building that? that's parallel to the river. That's the Okay, so yes, you have the space. Yes. yes. I'm sorry, yeah, the short answer is yes. Yes, okay, thank you. So you're, my understanding is you're asking for basically seven feet, you own five feet, from the building, you're asking for additional seven feet so that you can put um, patios, terraces, whatever in that area. All right, um, so will that property then go, so will those terraces go right to the property line? Will there be, I mean, I'm just, uh, will there be um, landscaping. landscaping? Will there be uh, uh, some kind of um, boundary between your property and the city property or are we building up to the seven feet and then is it going to be up to the city to you know to have some kind of um, boundaries like that would that would uh, kind of define the area of what is part of the um, condominiums and what is part of the park uh, the city won't pick up any more responsibility, so the city will have no responsibility associated with this. What we envision is 10 feet of patio, 2 feet of landscape strip where you have rose bushes and that type of thing in it. And then the city grass, the park grass. Okay. So, without that 7 feet, it's too tight for us to do anything like that. And with the 7 feet, we can really make it nice. So that's... That's the request. I mean, I, I, I'm personally, and I'm not opposed, and I've said this before in our other meetings, I'm not opposed to the to the um, seven feet, um, but the property that the, that you're talking in trade, um, I'm not crazy about that property. Um, one is because you have the, the one is you have. Um, <coughs> Uh, buried power lines over in the other. What I would like to see, and I'm just throwing it out there, I'd like to see a, an exchange of um, whether whether we give them part of give them High Street, and the city takes the prop the property all the way over to the library. Um, I see having trying to on that. If you're just having that little bit of high street, trying to utilize the boat launch with, with parking, with um, pulling vehicles in, turn with a, hauling a trailer, turning them around, backing them, you know, backing them in where you pull out, and then you know where are you going to park a, you know, a trailer and a um, vehicle that's connected, um, and that's where I think the city could then develop that land to be able to accommodate those types of, of things. Um, I just, and that's just where I'm coming from. Were you asking, were you the parcel two property on the other side on the south side of the street? Mm -hmm. So what I, you know, and at one time somebody said, oh that, you know, where the, where the purple or dark blue is, 
that that could be a, um, a splash pad or whatever. Well, I don't think a splash pad in that location right next, if I was buying a condo right next to them, kids and water, I mean, you're gonna have screaming, hollering and everything. So I don't, this is personally, I don't think that's a place for a splash pad. I'm talking about this property from here is, is so then to, accommodate, to help them out is basically looking at the vacating the high street, creating some kind of uh, driveway slash that gets you down into the, to the boat launch and then be able to park boat trailers and boats and, um, and that's just where, I'm, where, where my thought is. I know it's it's all in negotiations from one to another, um, and and it then it then resolves the the issue that we have of the uh, electric that is um, underground there. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from, uh, and having discussions with other community members. Right. Here. Oh, yes, that's better. Thank you. Can I scroll out a little bit? Yeah, please. All right. There you go. About everything, every yeah. I mean, everything south of 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 High Street, um, over to the library. I mean, I, I know that the the it's not owned by this. It's owned by this group. It's not owned by the city. The city's been mowing that and maintaining that for for years. So it's um, already owned by people who want to purchase the parcel. They already own. Right. They, they own. own the, they own the They own the parcel where the school and the. Uh, and the bus garage was. Okay. And then you have the vacated street. Okay. And then that little part, that parcel to the south, they own that. 2.82. Correct. Yeah, the 238 High Street, they own that. Okay. And it's, those were both, uh, those were school properties. Okay. And the school sold them. Okay. And, and you're saying. And High Street was uh, just, High Street was, High Street was platted, but High Street has never, there's never been a street Correct. there. Right. Correct. And you're saying if they're giving us a piece that they own, we, you would prefer that they give us the piece that's south of that, so it makes it a little more practical. I think it's better. Yeah, I think it's advan advantageous to the city yes. to figure out how you're going to, you know, utilize the boat launch. I mean, so for instance, right now where you see that trailer, I believe it's a pickup truck in that trailer, mm -hmm. that is actually parked on their property. So their prop, the city's property is between those two. Where if you took High Street and took it all the way over to the river, um, between those two red or orange lines, that belongs to the city. But everything, so half of that, all that so-called parking on the south side of that area is um, is the city doesn't own that. And so what? And what they're proposing is so if you take that little where you see the right where the 260 in the circle is on that building um, if you take and then the, the other part is the old gymnasium and and, and uh, building if you take that little bit of land right there that shows as part tar and looks like there's a car and trailer park there that's the, the property that they're proposing um, in a trade well, is that an option? Is what an option? What they asked for us now? The space south of there? Or by 238 Ice Street, are you talking about? Instead of the personal vote? Or is this not time to talk about that? I don't, I'm, 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 just, I'm throwing those yeah, things well, out. Well, I, first off, we're, we're not opposed to being part of a much larger conversation down the road about solving all the past sins, current sins that are going on there. He's correct that uh, uh, the, 
public in the city uses that property 003 as if it is uh, public property, but it's not. Right. So we're, we're not opposed to conversations about that down the road, but I think what we're asking is extremely reasonable uh, and where the car and the trailer is shown uh, is broken asphalt and weeds right now. And what we would do is we would uh, landscape that and make that nice. So, so you're saying no? The city option. would win if you see where there's a circle down there and then there's kind of half half circle that spins off and ends uh, in the asphalt. Yeah. We'd work to continue that landscape and make that nice. Right now there's a, a park bench right on the edge of the asphalt and we can really make that a beautiful area. And I think it's a very reasonable request and we're giving far more property than what we would be getting. So I think I think the request speaks for itself and is more than generous. So it's more interested in discussing No, not at all. I mean it's a it's a far, it's a far bigger discussion. I mean we're talking about 1,800 feet that we're asking for the seven feet, and now you're talking about a different parcel, one that's not contiguous to the park, so we've got an issue there, but... Uh, uh, I don't think we're not talking about a larger portion of the park. I think it is, prob it is it probably is a larger portion of the park. It's probably larger. larger to, it be significantly larger to fix a problem that uh, uh, the gentleman's talking about. Okay, so you're not saying the same, you're not saying, Harry, the same size charges? <clears throat> Well, there's so there's so I'm like there's different values. I mean, so if you're looking at that seven feet, certainly the square footage you're not giving up giving it up a lot, but you certainly are. There certainly is it certainly is very advantageous to that development um, that you you're giving up seven feet that has um, that allows them to put in. Uh, a larger terrace or patio and everything, but at the same time, you're also it's they're getting a nice view of the river. That park almost becomes it, it's certainly not their responsibility, but it it becomes you know it becomes it be, it almost becomes uh, a yard for that that group. Um, the other is so you know I'm just looking at different things in different parts of the country. At, you know we're read something recently where somebody did something to their property um, and now they're getting sued by uh, adjoining property, d different things. So you have that beautiful view of the river. Um, what if the parks five years from now says, oh, we want to put, we want to erect something right in front of that in that area that we own and it blocks the view of those condominiums. Uh, you know, what's, you know, does that, you know, so I'm saying, I guess in my mind, that seven feet is certainly very, very valuable as compared to just, you know, trading this piece of property for that. That, that to me, to the city, it has to be advantageous to both parties, and I don't see it being advantageous to both parties, meaning the developer and the city. I, I personally see it only as advantage that seven feet being advantageous for the developer and so so for the city. That's just that's my view. Yeah, we don't about anything tonight, then later on it might be harder to get. The part that I'm people I've talked to the residents I've talked to think it'd be great to expand that landscape in there, clean up the asphalt, turn that into landscaping and believe that uh, this is a very, very nice request. Uh, what it feels like is sensing that we're over the barrel needing that seven feet, and so let's work it for all it's worth. I hope this gets viewed in the context of this is a more than reasonable request to help a project go forwards on a blighted property that's been sitting there for 15 years. That's the perspective I hope this is viewed in. And, and mine is, I'm only on the parks. That decision ends up with the commission. I'm just giving my, my views. That, um, I, I have certainly have no, um, 
uh, vote in the matter at all. I'm just, as, as being on the parks, I'm just giving my, what my opinion is of that. And I, um, I will. That we're a steward of the public and everybody who uses that space. I, and I so agree. And I, I will say, just for the record, that, that he really was trying to represent the way it's being used now and our future plans for that space as well as River Park Park. And so we need to make sure that we are considering the trucks and the trailers and, and the, the boats that we use. It's not really it's nothing personal against you guys. We're just trying to make sure that we're decent stewards of the public and the interests of the long term. I, I appreciate that too. Two thoughts. One, I want to be on the record that uh, when we started conversations uh, with Mike on this project a year ago, we said, and also down the road, we'd like to chat about uh, the 003 parcel that uh, the public uses, and we're the ones that threw on the table, hey, see if we can figure something out here that's possible for the city regarding that piece. So that's where our mindset is in our heart, uh, and we threw that out early on. That's not the conversation tonight, but uh, that's where we're at. With respects to utilization on the boat ramp, uh, that's a different conversation for Bay Keating High Street, but we also have the same perspective and heart. Uh, the conversation uh, with Mike and the city has been, if that happens, we will work with the city to create the proper drive turnaround area and designed to make sure that that is still a very friendly place to use. Okay. And so with, the, with the with the vacation, project. look at all the asphalt that's there. Uh, with the vacation of all that, uh, there will be significantly less asphalt and far more landscaping. So we have the opportunity to beautify that entire property, including the boat, run, boat launch and uh, the 003 property. I think that sounds wonderful, as long as we have Well, there would be, they would, I mean, the council would, have, would probably want that as part of the agreement. Okay. So, so, yeah, awesome. No. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. So, and and again, you know, my yeah. thoughts, my proposal <coughs> would be, so when you're talking about the amount of property, um, again, if you took that um, property, the majority of you'd still have to have some little swing in that would that would allow to get into the boat launch and everything but the majority of that property from all the way down to high street um to okay. this side the high street that being part of the trade um now we're not we're to me we're not talking about a big discrepancy of square footage i mean if you took if again i don't know if that's what the city wants to do or not but if you took, so if you took, instead of trading that, that section behind the building, you took, they got the seven feet and they got majority of all that pro property that goes down to the property line of the um, high street. Are you talking about the, 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 the street plat? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, I, not doing, sitting there doing the math, but just looking at it, that's, to me is a considerable amount of property that then I'm just thinking outside the box that then um, would help them with part would help the the because my understand my understanding is the runtsman or excuse me the gymnasium area and everything is going to be created as retail space correct so then you're going to need parking. I don't know where you are going to put that, but again, that's an area that you would be able to create for parking for that retail space. Our parking would be in the front and on the north side. High Street, uh, I, Todd, High Street, as of right now, you weren't even remotely close to talking about, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, what you're just asking for tonight and looking for is the seven foot long property line in exchange for that blue section. A later date, come back and have discussions on 
uh, High Street and the rest of it. Correct, very well stated. Uh, with that property that uh, we would uh, trade to the city, we also would commit to landscape to make that look beautiful continuation of the park that's already there. With respect to High Street, I mean, picture's worth a thousand words, right? Right now we're looking at nothing but cracked asphalt. Uh, our intent would be if it's vacated, typically uh, both property owners uh, get half of the vacated road. We happen to be property owners on both sides, but our intent is not to make a request for a vacation because we need more parking, it's so that we can landscape it and make it look nice. That would be the plan down the road. I think if you ask anybody out walk around the street, it's what we're proposing, you know, if there's a vacation to landscape and make it look nice. Is that a positive thing for Lowell? I think nine out of 10 people would say absolutely. It's what we're proposing with the seven feet uh, in exchange for almost twice the amount of area, which will agree to landscape. Is that a positive thing for Lowell? I think absolutely. It, it widens the park, it makes the park bigger, and adds more landscaping. Do you get a timeline when I understand the construction end of it and well, what's going on, but uh, are you, that parcel too, is that something that's going to evolve in the next year, year and a half, two years? I'd like to see what we're talking about now, the condos there and that type of thing go forward nicely and truthfully. We don't have a plan drawn up for parcel two uh, and we're not focusing on parcel two right now. We want to do the other part do it very nicely, do it very well, and then come back at a later date. Um, I think the road vacation is a conversation uh, down the road, but I think the road vacation would be very positive for Lowell. And uh, you know, we're, we're residents of Lowell. We, the way we've talked about this project, we've said we want to put our best foot forward and make it look really nice and have our name on it. We'd feel good about that. It's not a bravado thing, it's uh, we feel good about uh, addressing this blade of property. Right. And Perry, I agree with you. Maybe there is something we can do with the parcel too, eventually. But <coughs> in Todd's defense, I know he's not prepared to, to do anything on that caliber. Um, they may go back and have conversations and then it's something that possibly could happen one way or another. But I think, yeah, I think the answer tonight is going to be almost impossible. So, are you looking to make a decision tonight of trading that property? Well, no, I mean, there's a number of steps that have to happen. There's, we have, we, there would have to be a, there would have to be, it would have to be removed from the park plan. That's the first thing that has to happen before they can even. And, and council, <coughs> well, the park board is a recommending body. Um, they can recommend to do it. They can recommend not to. That being said, it would still go to the council, and the council can make any decision they see fit. Um, and in addition, with the there's also the DNR trust fund issue. The council, <coughs> while the park board can recommend, they can make they can take a they can make a recommendation to the council. The council can accept the rec recommendation or make modifications any way they see fit. The DNR trust fund issue is that seven feet, there has to be a land conversion. Meaning, in order for us to vacate that seven feet, <coughs> we have to get conversion property. That's that small blue parcel that we talked about. Is it because it was purchased with DNR fund? Correct. We took a grant for the, uh, yeah, and, for the amphitheater. Right. Oh. right, and any park property that, any park property that receives a DNR trust fund grant must remain park property in perpetuity. However, development issues come up all the time with adjacent property <coughs> where DNR has this method in place that has to be followed that they will consider conversion. But the conversion that you're receiving has to be more than you're giving, has to be equal to or more than what you're giving. And up. connected to an existing property. Correct. Oh, okay. It has to be new property the city doesn't own that can be, deter that can be turned over to park property. So in reality, we wouldn't really be able so, yeah, that issue is a separate issue okay. down the road. Even if we wanted to. Right. Uh, I mean, 
I, I just, I, I don't see the, I don't see it trading that piece of that property, and I don't see it being hugely advantageous to the city. What's, I mean, the, what's the parks plan for that seven feet right now? What's it say in your master plan about just about that seven feet? It's just it's part of the park. I don't know if there's any de developing it or anything. I don't. I'd have to look at the new park plan that was just. Well, I think getting that property to not look like it. 20-year-old abandoned school is positive for the city. So I don't understand how it's not. We are taking land you're not doing anything with right now and trading it for land we're not doing anything with right now. We're getting almost double the square footage and we're getting rid of the, probably the biggest blended property in the city. Which is I don't know how that's not advantageous. But well, we also gain quite a there. bit of your tax revenue yeah. dollars yeah. more as well too. So there, it's a win win for the city as far as tax dollars and getting that part of it as well, they develop it. And let's be clear, this isn't sure. They're going to make a ton of money. This isn't like we're doing other goods in the park. They're going to make bank. They're going to make a ton of money on that. Which is fine. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. it'll be a win win for both of us, which is good. Mm -hmm. But let's not act like we're just doing it out of the goods that are hard to want to I would never act like that, but to say it's not <laughs> advantageous for the city is incorrect. Okay, that's true. Unused property for unused property. Yeah, yeah, right. and uh, to even try to do something over in that parcel two right now, I don't think the DNR would go for that. No, that's, that's not, not part of this. It's not adjoining to another part. So you're either going to so be on one side. It does have nothing to do. With that's a separate be. issue. That's yeah. regards yeah. to the issues yeah. that's going right now. What is the separate. exact issue? The exact issue is: Do we Just want to switch line. what was offered or yeah, the yellow or for the blue? Right, the seven feet. And the transfer. The other issues can be dealt now. When, when those issues, when the vacation comes about, there's going to be there's going to be impact on the park. To say the park doesn't shouldn't have input on it, I, I don't I don't I don't agree with that. They should, but that's a separate issue. In order to facilitate the first phase of the development at this time, that's a separate issue. The seven feet by the the 263 by seven feet by the 67 by 47. That's really what the that's what the issue is at this point. Okay. So here's my so that that property that they're offering to swap. Am I hearing that they're going to develop it, or am I, or is the city going to develop it? Is the city going to tear out the ash ash asphalt and put grass and make it park like et cetera and um, so that's because I, I kind of heard. I thought I heard from you that you were talking about. We would do it. Yeah. You know that cost and everything. Correct. Right. Right. I understand. They would. Yeah. That's all. Okay. So is there is there a um, is there a uh, likeness or what I uh, a diagram of what that would look like, or is it just tearing it out and it's just grass and that's it? And I mean. I guess when I'm trading that, I, you know, you're, you're talking about that, but at the same time, if it goes into the parks and then the parks doesn't, I mean, we don't have money enough to do the, what we want in all of our parks. So now if we have to develop that, or is it, is it, is it just going to be just grass or there, is there going to be mounds? I guess I'd like to see some, some site plan of what it would look like after the, in, in trading that. I, I can make this simple one. I, our proposal says it, and I'm saying it publicly. We'll landscape that at our cost. That's what our paperwork says in our bid. And I will also say that uh, a landscape plan submitted to uh, to staff acceptable to staff, so that staff says you got a dozen rose bushes in there, and this, that, and the other thing. We want 15 rose bushes. Fine, it's staff's call. Uh, I. I have no intention of this. Giving to the park board to decide because it needs to look like I, I just, what the rest of the stuff is they're doing. I don't have a vision. I don't current. I'm. I don't have a vision of what it would look like. I guess I would like to have a vision of what well, that would look like. City input on that vision, right? Correct. Absolutely. I like it to be pretty. Obviously, my mind's not clean enough. It should that, be because you maintain some the pretty plannings there, right. and it could be subject to staffs. I'm just saying that before I. My before you would trade that, I would I would hope that the city would get some kind of rendering of what it would look like. I just gave you a blank check. 
Well, I think a commitment to the. That's pretty good. I think a commitment to the development. I don't think you did. Yeah, but Perry, I think you did. I think he absolutely. A did. blank check. Publicly, he just stated. He just said they will. So if we, so if we, if, we, if Park says we want, when there is reason a path through it, then. But what I envision, and tell me if I'm wrong, Todd, is the extension of this area right here. Finish filling all this, and this either becomes, in the park's mind, this is either going to become grass area, or it's going to go concrete, or it's going to go asphalt. But Todd's proposing, in my opinion, is landscaping all of this big section to give us back green space with trees, a park, and with everything. With the city park input, correct? Yeah, that's what he said. Let's, yeah, let's make it pretty. Uh, you know, higher up where that complete circle is, there's some nice plantings in there. There's some yeah, that, different yeah. stuff around there. Let's let's do it similar. Let's make it nice. Yeah. Let's make it nice. And yeah, it's your call. How do you want to do that? Cliff, you want to get up there? If you're going to talk about how can I keep, you can how can I keep my mouth shut? Um, <laughs> I'm Cliff Yankovich. I own, if you scrolled up a little bit, my wife and I live at 329 North Monroe and we've had a business in town for 16 years for those who don't know me. Um, I also use the kayak, I, I'm on rich all the time to leave the kayak thing longer. Um, I, I think, number one, that area of all of the park gets used a lot and I think increasing the green space there um, in, in my mind I think another bench or two would be nice not just all plants because that area has the boat launch and it also has the kayak launch and it also has the little dock that goes out the furthest that gets of, of the whole river I walk up and down the river walk to work every day I spend a lot of time all this summer um, if there's any concentration, mm -hmm. it happens there. So I'm, I think you guys are getting a good deal because the, the seven feet is going to make the whole thing look nicer. And I, I just, I also would hate to see anything impeding the progress because that whole eyesore over there has been something that's been bugging me for the last, how long has it been empty? Seven years? Um, almost 16, right? Well, I mean, for a while they were using it as the Unity building, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. And not really too bad. But I, I think, I think it would look really good, and I think it would get used, believe it or not. I don't think he's just just putting grass there for nothing. I think people would would utilize it because it's by the boat and the kayak launch. And I won't repeat myself. I know. My only question is, so if it's wonderful, they're going to landscape it. If at some point we do decide we want to do something else, um, do we need to compensate them for the cost of doing the landscaping? You know what I mean? It, I just want to know, like, in the future, so it would be considered city property, park property, and if we and we have the discretion to do with it what we choose, if we do choose to do something. Not You're saying if the master plan changes, are you going to have to reimburse them for what yes. he did to it? Yes, because sometimes it's, we put the money in, so mm -hmm. now we kind of, we don't own it, but we kind of own it. So I just want to make sure that was clear as well. Because do we want them to do the landscaping if that is sort of a conditional thing? They do the landscaping and then they decide what the usage is. I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. that it's not a conditional thing, and the okay. DNR requirement is that the title's transferred fee yes. simple, which means the city owns it. Right. So we don't have discretion. We would own it. If, if they would not have, yeah, that's part of, there has to be new, like I said, with the DR, there has to be new land the city owns. So. I, I still, I'm, this is just, I still would like to see some kind of um, what it would look like. What? I mean, like, like, like maybe, I, and I'm just thinking of different things, like maybe, um, Cliff made a good point. Maybe, maybe there should be like a gazebo there, you know, for, you know, so you're out of the sun. Different things. I, I just. But he's offering you the input on that. You yeah. want it right now, and that's not going to happen. 
it's not feasible for him to draw you a plan of what it's going to look like right now. No, but I'm saying I'm not saying right this. I'm not saying tonight. I'm saying in the next. Well, I asked you if you're making that decision tonight. If no, you're no, no decision. So it's so, so it's could not. He, so he has something in the next thirty days. Yes. I mean, I'm just saying so that you have, because I, I, you know, when somebody says, oh, I'm giving you a blank check, well, I mean, I, a reasonable, reasonable person, I want to know, okay, can, can this blank check be a gazebo, uh, a park, you know, some trees, some park, you know, different things in that area? I, I think it can become a lot of things within a reasonable amount of money spent. I mean, we can't ask him to spend a million dollars. I understand that, but, yeah. but the gentleman just said, I'm writing you a blank check. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that we may not be able to visualize how we want to use it until the construction is done, mm -hmm. and then we may want to decide at that time. Because I won't be able to know right now what I think is the best choice. Because right. really you're looking at the side of a deeper yeah. building. Yeah. Yeah. I think what he'd like to hear tonight is that, that we're willing to, to make this swap mm -hmm. so that he can go back to his partner and says, okay, let's look at 99%, 100% that they're going to do it. Now let's go ahead and start yeah. the development phase so I can bring it back to you and show you what this has the potential of looking like. He's a businessman. I personally wouldn't invest a lot of money until I got some positive feedback that this is the way we're going, and now I can spend some money and make it happen. That's all. That's all up to the council. Right. Agreed. So, what do you want from us exactly? Do we need to say something specific to let you know? Um, I think what will eventually happen is um, <coughs> what we will do. I've talked to the city attorney about it on, on both the process. The first one is. We would bring you a modified copy of the park plan, taking out the seven feet and accepting the converted property as park plan. That would be the first thing. Then you would make a recommendation to the city council if you would do that. Um, now that, and I just was looking at the previous thing. So that seven feet is going not just in front of the building, but going all the way north to the to the north to the lot line. Correct. The 263 feet, Susie, can you, can you scroll up? Like it's straight it goes over the feet. King Street. It goes basically from the sidewalk. the sidewalk, where the basically where that lower circle starts just a little, goes all the way to the park, all the way to, oh, so the all the way to King. So so King, King, all the way down to just before that sidewalk. So if they were to decide to build another, some more condos to the north, they already own the seven feet. They already have the seven feet they need. Yep. Is that kind of your intent? Yes. Yeah. That makes absolutely perfect sense. Or even if they're doing the north parking, they're going to be in the second drive. You're not going to pull everybody around. No. We would at some point. I, I believe this has to happen at the council level. There would have to be a public hearing on vacating the, or on, on, the, on the land swap for the DNR. I have to get the specifics from the DNR on that. But they sent me a letter last week on it. That would have, but that would happen at council. But we would, you know, we would, we would want a recommendation from the from the park board. Mm -hmm. With that, you can do what you what you what you wish, and uh, could, if you wish to make the modifications or not to the to the 